Dreamcast is a home video game console released by Sega on November 27, 1998 in Japan. September 9th, 1999 in North America and October 14th, 1999 in Europe. It was the first in the sixth generation of video game consoles, preceding Sony's PlayStation 2, Nintendo's GameCube and Microsoft's Xbox. The Dreamcast was Sega's final home console, marking the end of the company's 18 years in the console market. There are over 624 games that are known to have been released on the Sega Dreamcast console. Perhaps the biggest innovation was the built-in modem for online play. Better still, Sega released its own network called SegaNet. That's a massive two years before Xbox Live. Despite winning early rounds, the Dreamcast fell with the release of the PlayStation 2 and was discontinued in 2001. Sad but true, I never discovered this game until the demise of the Sega Dreamcast. I did try to buy it, but every time um, I was told it was going to be in stock, um, I got to the shop and it had sold out again. So I kind of lost interest and moved on to other games. But it was a few years later, I was at a car boot and they had it there for about £2 and I snatched this guy's arm off. Then I remember racing home, uh, putting it in the GD-ROM and absolutely loving it. For me, this is a beast of a game. Mad for it. <laughs> this one reminds me of Convoy. Ah, uh, Breaker 1-9, this here's Rubber Duck. You got a copy on me, Pig Pen? Come on. Oh yeah, 10-4, Pig Pen. For sure, for sure. By golly, it's clean to flag the town. Come on. Mercy sakes alive. Look, we got us a convoy. With the dark of the moon on the 6th of June and a Kenworth pulling logs. Cab over Pete with a reefer on and Jimmy hauling logs. Cause we got a little old convoy rocking through the night. Yeah, we got a little old convoy. Ain't she a beautiful sight? Convoy. Now, if like me, you grew up on an 8-bit machine, like me, you probably first cut your teeth on things like Gunship, Tomahawk, I think there was Fighter Bomber, and the legendary F-16 Combat Pilot. But these games were quite complex, and you needed an overlay on the keyboard because there were so many keys just to take off and land. But somehow, despite condensing down the control scheme, uh, dumbing it down if you like, I just couldn't put this down and I had just as much fun with this as all those other games previous. Oh god, I'm one of those adults that sleeps with the light on. I'm just easily spooked. I'm convinced I've seen things in the dark. Ghosts have even touched me. And I know deep down it's all nonsense. And I understand the science behind it as well. Especially in regards to infrasound and the different audio frequencies. So I have to be really careful when playing a survival horror game like this. And the reason I mention all that is because this game properly spooked me out. And for a video game to do that to me, it makes the list. I must love my punishment. Well, I've played Wave Race 64, and whilst Aqua GT isn't even in the same marina, I still liked playing this game. I think I was desperate for some sort of water racing game, uh, but the two player option is brilliant. And for the time as well, the graphics were a proper, a really nice step up from the PlayStation 1. The music is just there, it plays, it doesn't really get you pumped up. And I've heard some negativity about the handling, but from memory, I quite liked it. So it might not be the greatest racer in the world, but it's still bloody good. If you're new to this channel, you need to know one thing. I love shooter maps. I didn't read any reviews about this game back in the day. I just picked it up and bought it. Just seeing the screenshots on the reverse cover was enough for me. Now, I did struggle with the control system at first, and if I'm honest, my hands and fingers are a little too cumbersome to master this, but I was able to find workarounds, and in the end, I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. One of the things I loved about the Sega Saturn was all the 2D games that you got. And despite the push from the industry to go 3D, 2D never really left me. So one word, nostalgia. Nothing really beats Resident Evil 4 for me, but Code Veronica has probably got a better fear factor. Graphically, it's a massive step up from the first three. Is it better than the first three games? I'm not sure. 
What I can say is it's definitely as good. There's also some truly terrifying moments and with that excruciating moments of difficulty. Regardless, four or five late night sessions will see you through. Code Veronica on the Dreamcast is still a great place to be scared witless. I don't really remember too much about Border Down. I do recall it being a favorite of mine. It's your typical side-scrolling shooter map in a tradition of maybe R-Type, Gradius. It plays like an early 90s throwback, but with graphics from the sixth generation. But it's proved quite the showcase for the Sega Dreamcast. And for a quick fix of arcade action, Border Down has still got what it takes today. This is one I get out every now and again, just to show the ladies. Definitely one for the collection. If you're a fan of the idea of Capcom versus SNK, at the time this would have felt like paradise. I'm not going to lie to you, it's not the greatest fighter in the world, but it captures the magic of both universes. So it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. So it's that feeling that the little dog has got a chance against the big dog, the little dog being SNK. It is quite unbelievable to think that these two giants of the fighting genre somehow managed to team up with customizations that are off the scale. It's in my list because you know what? They pulled it off. Charge and Blast for me is remembered as one of the Dreamcast finer games. And I think it stayed exclusive to the Dreamcast. I don't believe it was ported to any other system. I personally think it was magnificent but for some, it probably came a little bit too late. Is it just me, but this still looks fantastic. Word of warning though, you need to play this on the most difficult setting and get ready for the encounter with Godzilla. Charge and Blast probably is an acquired taste, but an imposing one at that. The reality is, if you own a Dreamcast and a light gun, you need this in your collection. You know what, for me, it feels like Virtua Cop. It's impossible to think how they could have improved Confidential Mission. In fact, I remember playing this and thinking, where on earth are they gonna go next with the shooter light gun game? There's also uh, lots of highly unrealistic acrobatic moments, but if I'm honest, it's all the more interesting for it. What's sad is that Confidential Mission is an arcade and Dreamcast exclusive. Now this reminds me of an old 8-bit game. I think it was called Room 10, but don't quote me on that. The only real difference being that this is a little bit more static. I've heard a few people say, oh, this is like Res, but no, correction, this came out before Res. I quite like the trance soundtrack as well that plays throughout, and the announcer is typical Sega magic. I wonder if they used the Virtua Tennis mechanics on the player. Cosmic Smash. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. A big game needs a big intro, and they don't come any bigger than Crazy Taxi. Without question, Sega are the masters of the arcade. In this one, it's just you and a yellow taxi, with the laws of physics gone A1. It's the equivalence of the Beatles and their yellow submarine. Rumour has it that the lyrics and game were conceived under the influence. On that bombshell, there's only one thing left to do. Dust off an old copy and drive like a maniac. Whilst most other 3D fighters focused on the world of martial arts, uh, a title like Virtual On was a breath of fresh air back in the day, especially for the Dreamcast. Yes, despite its control difficulties, you really needed a twin stick. This game is still a winner. And especially thanks to its fast paced action and the flashy aesthetics. This is the Sega we all know and love. And long live the Dreamcast. The controls are terrible. Graphics certainly don't take full advantage uh, of the DC. It's a bit like a B-movie video game, if you like. But make sure you don't play it with the kids around. And also, it's best played with the lights out. Fans of Resident Evil should, in theory, like this. 
but you'll need lots of patience to get the most out of it. Yes, it's difficult, but as a survival horror game, it's one of the best on the DC. I read a review from GameSpot where they described Kenji Eno as both a genius and a madman. After playing his game, I think I agree. Back in the day of the 8-bits, fighting games pretty much consisted of a male liner. I know there was Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. I think it was Sonya Blade and Chun-Li. But I think Dead or Alive, Dead or Alive 2, was the first to represent, give a decent roster. Uh, you know, of predominantly female characters. Anyway, I'm not sure what my point is here, but... The graphics are absolutely fantastic. They really took things up to another level. I know the PS2 was shinier, had a bit more detail with customizable outfits, but this is still brilliant. I'm no professional game critic, but I know what I like. And this is one of those late 90s bad boy brawlers. And if you liked uh, Renegade, Target Renegade, Double Dragon, this will be right up your street. And similar to those games, You'll probably complete it in no time at all, but for me, it's one of those where I keep coming back to it. I play it over and over again, and have done for the last 20 years. I think I just love arcade games, and I think I love it even more when an arcade game translates this well to a console. These are still some of the finest graphics you'll ever see on the DC. No surprise then, Yu Suzuki, Sega's then top designer, and the brains behind Outrun strikes again and continues his love affair with Ferrari. Now some think the difficulty curve on this game is really high. I've even heard people say that this game's boring, but I think that's just their prejudice against Ferrari shining through. For me, it's highly entertaining. I personally find it really enjoyable. Lots of fist bump moments. I don't know that much about Fighting Vipers 2, but I think it builds on the heritage of uh, Virtua Fighter. It plays really fast and the controls aren't clunky in the slightest. Any criticism against this game can be levelled at other games uh, in the genre. It would be great if it lasted a bit longer. I'd still take Dead or Alive 2, Soul Calibur and Virtua Fighter 3 over this. But I'm not going to lie to you, till this day I still play this. In fact, I'm going to go play it now. It took me ages to click with this game. I don't know why. To this day, I don't know why. I think it might be something to do with the fact that I was probably into more serious type of gaming. One minute I'm playing Max Payne on the PC and Deus Ex. The next minute I'm playing Fur Fighters. But once I got over the cartoon look and feel, this is seriously one of the best games on the Dreamcast. I mean, this game is fun. And it looks amazing. Yet another fantastic game on the Dreamcast. If you haven't already, add this to your collection. You might laugh, but I rushed home pretty much every night to play this uh, when it first came out. The only other game I've done that with is Bravely Default. And Bravely Default 2 on the Nintendo uh, 3DS. And that's how highly I rate this game. It's just bucket loads of fun and dangerously close to perfection. You better practice if you want to beat me. I absolutely love Gundam games, and this one is no exception. It's a fantastic mech simulation. Good old Bandai is known for flooding new systems with Gundam games. Uh, some of them are successful, while others, well, let's just say it's an acquired taste. Some people might find this tedious, uh, but those seeking a true mech uh, simulation will thoroughly enjoy it. The story is a bit of a dog, and some people have cited that it's a bit of a Metal Gear Solid ripoff, but that shouldn't instantly spell doom. In fact, it's got a great cyberpunk feel about it, and when you're not stealthily running around or hiding behind a box, there's a fantastic on your bike Grand Theft Auto style uh, experience to be had. The musical score is absolutely fantastic, and apparently, 
It was recorded uh, at Abbey Road Studios. So they properly went for it, and it must have done well because it spawned a sequel on the PS2. What a game, fantastic. Zombies, you name it, undead. The game can be completed in around 20 to 30 minutes on a good day, uh, which is probably typical of most arcade games. Even if you bring a friend along uh, for the ride, it'll still take you a while to gel and beat it. It's probably no better than all that have come before it, but it's that horror element, I think, that makes it much better, that stands out than, from the crowd. Of the dead. Hydro Thunder helped the Dreamcast get off to a fantastic start. It was one of the early launch titles but I completely missed it. Um, I did pick it up later and it's a superb game with fantastic graphics and the soundtrack, um, it's just arcade, arcade perfection and the controls are really easy to use as well. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, the game is difficult but it rewards you with faster boats and more uh, fascinating scenery and residents. Everybody should own this. Graphics, gameplay, soundtrack, which pulls you in massively from the start. I don't even care that the story isn't well developed. I love owning the Dreamcast just for this game. And it brings back memories of the Sega Saturn and Radiant Silvergun. I think Treasure are probably my favourite developers of all time. Ikaruga is an original shoot 'em up with a dose of strategy. As far as shoot 'em ups go, this was way ahead of the curve. And like our type, Ikaruga set new standards. When I think of Illbleed, I think of Marmite. The game has its challenging moments, uh, but I kept coming back for more and more. Long after I thought I'd finished it. <laughs> Much like the bosses. Illbleed is unique, strange, and terrifying at times. It's a fantastic game that I think everyone should play. I think from memory the critics hammered it. I mean that might be because it's a massive cheese fest, especially the voice acting. But for me, I think uh, with mixed results, it pushes the boundaries of survival horror. Now although Jet Set Radio Future is a deeper, faster, harder game than the original, I prefer the original the original had probably the most impact on me, probably due to the attitude of the game. And I'm not sure I played anything like it before. And I'm not sure that there are many games out there that have recreated the skills and thrills of skating. There's nowhere else this exhilarating on the Dreamcast. So, going to try my best not to come across as a load of old waffle here. Now, The Last Blade 2 might appear, might feel cheap uh, on certain levels uh, for some people. The graphics could be better. And I appreciate in 2022 that people have probably had their fill of fighting games. But even with this insane saturation of fighting games, and despite being one of SNK's greatest fighters, it remains lost because of flashier efforts. When something's this good, I like to sing about it. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Looking for adventure. And whatever comes our way. Yeah, darling, gonna make it happen. Take the world in a loving embrace. Fire all the guns at once and explode into space. I like smoke and lightning. Heavy metal thunder, a racing with the wind, born to be wild. Yeah, uh, sorry about that. I, I always try to take the piss out of myself. <laughs> but what about Soul Reaver, eh? Legacy of Cain. It's pretty much a straightforward uh, combo charged bloodbath. It's fluid, uh, well paced, and there's a good balance. There's constant moans and scuffles in the background. Every corridor is infested with death. I love the malevolent, dreamlike quality of this game. It's really hard to leave a high quality game off any list like this. Ov's not as good as Mario Kart, 
or uh, Crash Team Racing. But although left in the wake of those games mentioned, Looney Tunes Space Race can't be ignored and there's some truly spectacular tracks that leave you far from feeling comfortable and that's what we're here for and there's a sense of being in this Warner Brother universe like no other racer before it. People of all ages will love this game. Oh boy, probably one of the best fighters ever created. Capcom already proved they were the best with Street Fighter. I thank God that I can still perch on the side of my sofa, gripping my Dreamcast controller, whilst the red-blooded alpha male in me takes over. Probably more geek, nerd, but I think nerds are intelligent, so that rules me out. Slightly embarrassing, yes, but I love it. But that's fine, I've got enough high intellect in my life that I can settle for a bit of dumb from time to time. Metropolis Street Racer is all about drifting, sweeping corners and western swing. I'll let this guy do the singing. Well, I met a girl named Mary Lou. Her dress was green, her eyes were blue. Couple that with a set of challenges and cars that allow you to choose how you want to play. Add to that 262 tracks in total. And there's some that will argue that this is the first example of an open world racing game. And let's not forget the QDOS system, where players are rewarded for racing stylishly as well as quickly. The best driving game on the DC. Mr. Driller is so good that it featured in 1001 video games you must play before you die. It's great to play with the family or just keep it around to play on your own for a quick game or two. It's an instant classic, everyone will love it and if you're from the 1980s it's a great way to go back and visit. Anyone who's a fan of Tetris or fast and frantic puzzle games, I can't recommend this game enough. So a simple, fun, classic action puzzle game, I just wish it was a bit more hardcore. Madden is the bigger game, but NFL 2K2 plays just as good. It's probably aimed more at the arcade casual gamer, because I like it. Plus, on the Dreamcast, it's the only real alternative to Madden. Not only is it a great single player experience, but also it's great to play with friends. And it's easily the best American football game on the Dreamcast. It's not difficult to see while this, once upon a time, is considered a masterpiece. In fact, this is a piece of Sega history and it still looks fantastic. It looks absolutely beautiful. And in 2022, you can still play online. So then, the game that keeps on giving. It's another Sega Dreamcast game that once you've surrendered to its peculiar world, Fantasy Star Online empowers, engages, and rewards to extents that few games have ever achieved. Gaming on the Dreamcast, it gets you. Shoot first, ask questions later in this one. Each time I played Power Stone, it made me feel as though my eyes were being overwhelmed by sheer amount of on-screen visual detail. Colorful sparks of idiosyncratic brilliance shine their light on the Dreamcast. Adding to that visual splendor, Gameplay is everything we needed. And it turns out that Power Stone is a surprisingly deep brawler. Welcome to Power Stone Wars. I've no idea how we got Power Stone 2 on the Dreamcast. This second game is a delightfully risky experiment and feels entirely natural. That's why Power Stone 2 is more than comfortable taking its place alongside the original. It's thoroughly, thoroughly fun. A real guilty pleasure of mine. It doesn't put any major effort into innovation over the original. The controls are identical and it's essentially the same game as the original, just more. Back in the day I could only afford maybe a handful of games at best, so if you had a dud you were pretty much stuck with it. You could take it back you know, maybe a few times, 
but unlike today where you just wouldn't play it if it was bad even if slightly broken uh, I'd still play it and I think this is where the Dreamcast changed things even the games that were perceived as bad I thought they were brilliant they were really good so I'm probably on my own when I say Project Justice is fantastic ah fight to the death match what an absolute beaut in fact one of many games that probably pushed the power of the Dreamcast I remember at the time I had a thing a 33k dial up modem back then it was all about getting your Dreamcast online which admittedly is the ultimate test in testing your FPS skills against other human players there's also a single player mode and a really good four player mode it was just cool to blow people up Raymond the game might not look like a spring chicken but the character's animation believe it or not is surprisingly fluid and the frame rate is silky smooth I found myself wanting to continue playing this game just because of the audio alone uh, for me uh, I just found it unbelievable in fact I enjoy playing this just as much as any of the Super Mario games it's just a shame then that it doesn't last as long as those this is yet another fantastic armless and legless adventure if you're a fight fan you'll love it it's the alley shuffle of boxing games on the Dreamcast. Now the first game was absolutely brilliant, but this took it to another level. Six little letters still spell big trouble. And for the Dreamcast, this is a knockout punch. I personally would love to see this series continued in 2022. A boxing game doesn't need to be serious, but whichever way we look at it, ready to rumble, rocks and rules on the Dreamcast. Killing the undead in Resident Evil 3 is amazing fun. I think it's safe to say that Capcom are the kings of terror and there's nothing better, no greater feeling than sending a zombie straight to hell. I'm talking video games here. I was so happy that this got converted to the Dreamcast. Those of you that love horror games, well, you'll already know, but those that don't, add this one to your collection. Meet the illegitimate offspring of Afterburner and Panzer Dragoon. Get ready to shoot. Res is hard as nails. It's not only a test of skill in patience. Do it wrong. And you can kiss goodbye to a good night's sleep. Saying that, it's one of the best games to play in the dark. Don't forget to turn the volume up loud. I doubt Sega GT will make anybody's hit list of best Dreamcast games. And I know loads of people that criticise this game and uh, give many reasons as to why it's rubbish, but I don't care. It's my rubbish and I love it. One man's flaming wreckage is another man's driving simulator. And for me personally, and in my humble opinion, a must have. Is it better than Gran Turismo or Gran Turismo 2? Well, no, but it sits somewhere in between. I've never been to Yokosuka in Japan, but believe me, I know it like the back of my hand. Easily one of the best. Fusa! Fusa! An absolute work of art. Real son! Fusa! Some say the only reason to buy a Dreamcast. You can even play Space Harrier and Hang On. Both games are also created and designed by Yu Suzuki. Hello, my name is Ryo Hazuki. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Probably the best game I've ever played. An unbelievable experience. It just improves over the original in every way possible. Sadly, because of the death of the Dreamcast, I never got to play this game the first time around. And when I did finally play it, I had to do so illegally with English translations on an actual DC. But you know what? At least the DC went out with a bang. We love you, Yu Suzuki. Sega, we still love you too. 
Let's just get one thing straight. The Sega Dreamcast did not fail. It sold over 10 million units. Failed consoles don't change lives. Skies of Arcadia is probably one of the best RPG games ever made. And I personally can't recommend it enough. This one will take you over 50 hours to complete, but I guarantee you'll come out the other side a better person. In the future, nobody can hear you scream over the sound of giant hulking robots. Set over 500 years into the future, your job is to steam in there Rambo style and rob the latest tech. Although it's a fantastic single player experience, I can't even begin to imagine how fantastic this would have been with multiplayer support. It's a great pick up and blast. And it's a game every self-respecting Greencast fan needs in their collection. Oh god, I remember this one. I think I took about a week off work to play it. At the time, I think the graphics were some of the best I'd seen, especially on the Dreamcast. Now, I still prefer Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Mega Drive, but I love what Sonic Team achieved on the Dreamcast. The speed of this game is unbelievable and it's the same for the second game as well. It was a must buy back in the day and it's a must collect if you're a Dreamcast owner today. If there's ever a Sega Mini on the horizon, it needs Sonic Adventure. Oh my god, two amazing Sonic games on the same console and it failed? That is such a shame because this console and its games deserve better. It's such a shame that people opted for a DVD player instead of buying this wonderful console. But talk about going out with a Sonic boom. This is one of the best Sonic games ever. Once again, Sonic Team lays down the blueprint on how to make a fantastic game. Well, it's the Dreamcast game I play the most, still play, so in that sense, it's probably my favorite. It's one of those where it's easy to get into. He put the Dreamcast on the map early in terms of graphics. And for a while, this was probably considered the best 3D fighter on the planet. For me, it's the ultimate casual fighter where you can just dip in and out. Wow, uh, playing this takes me back to the old comic books from my youth. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches thieves just like flies. Look out, here comes the Spider-Man. Here comes the Spider-Man. Is he strong? Listen, bud. He's got radioactive blood. Can he swing from a thread? Take a look overhead hey there there goes the spider-man i definitely think this is my favorite street fighter of all the series ever as far as i can make out the arcade and the dreamcast version are identical to get the best out of this though warning the dreamcast controller just isn't up to it it just goes to show that the sega saturn was a 2d powerhouse and the dreamcast is a 2d and 3D powerhouse. So we had to wait, but we got there in the end. So whether you pick this up on the Sega Saturn or the Dreamcast, this is a must for your collection. The graphics in this game are a mixed bag. One minute they work and the next minute they don't. And that's mainly due to collision detection issues and some absolutely shockingly terrible slowdown. It's no crazy taxi, that's for sure. So why has it made the list, I hear you asking? It's this simple. It's an absolute laugh a minute. It's not just about racing. It's about being able to destroy absolutely anything. So this game makes the list just for the comedy value. Well, this one hasn't aged well. Which feels really odd to me because this was one that I used to show off uh, to my friends when they came round to show off the power of the Dreamcast. But I still love it. 
And it reminds me of all those 2D scrolling fighters that have gone before it, only this time in 3D. There's no question about it, it's definitely a bloodbath of the game. But that's not its only charm. It's a beloved upgrade of what we used to experience in 2D. I like the first Tokyo Extreme Racer, but the controls didn't feel quite right. Fast forward to Tokyo Extreme Racer 2, not only have they improved the controls massively, they've also improved on the gameplay. There's more cars, there's more track, and a phenomenal amount of uh, upgrade options. And for those who get it, it's a masterpiece. I'm not even sure today how good this game is. And I don't want to insult it by saying it's the best DC racer ever. I'd never even heard of Ultimate Fighting Championship until I bought a DC. But thanks to this game, I'm UFC's biggest fan. It did take me a while to get into it. Yeah, um, a big, steep learning curve. And it's definitely one I keep well hidden from the kids. And back in the day, I, I couldn't believe how violent this game is. This is one of those games that should come with an 18 certificate. Boxing fans and wrestling fans should really enjoy this. So then, the most aggressive game on the DC. Now it's probably a bit cheeky to list this one because it came out really late. Maybe 2005, 2006. But I kept my Dreamcast console under the TV. And whilst it's not under the TV today, it's still within reaching distance. Alongside my Sega Saturn. But this game, without question, is a thing of beauty. It's also the best shoot 'em up on the Dreamcast, and trust me, that's some achievement. I'm a sucker for FPS games on the DC. I've even played Half Life, and whilst that's brilliant in the early stages, once you get outside, it's unplayable. So sad. I also liked Soldier of Fortune on the DC as well, but that hasn't aged well. To have Quake 3 Arena and Unreal Tournament on the same console, well, that's everything I ever wished for. On the DC, I can't think of another game that set my pulse racing in the same way that uh, Unreal Tournament did. I love watching things blow up. I especially liked uh, Destruction Derby, uh, Destruction Derby 2 and Demolition Derby as well. There's actually more to this game than meets the eye. There's lots of secrets hidden throughout. The vehicles look cool, they're armed to the teeth, and the graphics to look at even now are really good. Also, let your other half have a go. It will make them a better driver. The other thing what's amazing about this is the four player mode and 18 characters to choose from, all with their own stories. Now graphically, Virtua Fighter 3 didn't blow me away. But it's the rock solid gameplay where AM2 have decided to focus all of their efforts. Now, it's a better two player game than it is a single player, but you'll need the single player to hone your skills if you're to be any good at playing two player. But this is a deep fighter, and I know it's one of the early launch Dreamcast titles, so when you consider that, it's a really good arcade conversion. So, definitely one for every collector. Four players. Yep, four players. If you like tennis, it's not only the best family action game on the Dreamcast, but it's also a wonderful single player experience. Quick question for you. Does anybody know if there's been a tennis game since that has bettered Virtua Tennis? Now don't say Virtua Tennis 2 because I don't think that was as good as this. And to think though, that this was Sega's first attempt. First attempt on the Dreamcast and they did this. Tennis. Now, for those expecting SmackDown, you'll be sorely disappointed. If you want the best looking wrestling game ever for that time, and simply want to beat up your mates, then this was the wrestling game for you. As an arcade game, it serves its purpose. Also, why have four men in the ring when you can have nine on the Dreamcast? I mean, just look at this game. Look at the detail in the graphics and everything that's going on. You're looking at a game from the year 2000. That's bloody impressive.
Well, we've reached the end of this video. Apologies in advance if I've missed any of your favorite games off the list. It would be great if you leave a comment. I'd definitely like to know what your favorite DC games are. I've missed Outrigger off the list, which was absolutely brilliant. Uh, Choo Choo Rocket, that was a good one as well. Space Channel 5. Oh God, Bomberman was a good one. There's just too many great games on the DC to list them all. And speaking of great games, Zombie Revenge. Another great arcade conversion. Until next time, bye!